Hello everyone and welcome to the review of the Mansella ITPS1 Pro inverter. This is a pure sine wave inverter. Uh, it comes from a series of pure sine inverters. This is the smallest one and has uh, 2200 watts uh, power. Uh, while you can also buy this to up to 7000 watts and there are two versions so this is a 12 version option and there are also 24 volts option depending on your uh, system overall system so this is the smallest also the cheapest one from the series and today we are going to take a look at it also try it up to see if it works uh, check if it's truly a sine wave or not or a fake sine wave and we're going to do some tests to see how it works, if it works, if it's noisy, if it's not, and some efficiency maybe. So in the box you are going to get some uh, nuts with caps, some uh, um, cigarette lighter connector for your car, some additional screws, and the alligator clips that I already taken out, and some uh, really heavy gouge cables, and the inverter itself, which is not very big not very heavy uh, it's nice that it uh, has aluminium uh, built but uh, it also has these notches here so if you are doing such kind of a do-it-yourself project or you have a power wall or something like that you can fix this very easy with uh, those notches there you can screw it there and hang it up on the wall very nice idea on this side here we have a fan that should be thermally controlled we have the positive and negative input so here you are going to connect the battery and on the other side here we have an universal type of AC outlet this should work with uh, several type of plugs including European ones you have a DC in meter it will show the voltage at these uh, connectors here and we get the on off button and two LEDs here a very interesting thing is the manual uh, at first look when you read the first page let's call this a page it's not a lot of info here it gives you basic information not to disassemble it not to put it under water common sense uh, things it explain you the type of plugs and that they have a new universal one uh, and here on the back side it's not even the same uh, diagram with our model here it's something more basic without a voltage display and it has an led that should blink the state of the battery so nothing really useful but if you turn on the other side well here it gets a lot more interesting and it gives you uh, information about uh, the beep codes and errors if this has happened to have errors like uh, the over voltage under voltage it says about the input and output protections and there are plenty and that's very good as it has over voltage protection on the output and battery protection it will not over discharge a battery so it's all here then you have this really interesting table which explains you the rated current and uh, the thickness of the wires that you should use depending on the power that you want to draw uh, then it also explains you in detail how to actually calculate the battery capacity that you need to run a device and it gives you the formulas very simplified and you can easy calculate the battery that you need and knowing the output uh, draw uh, and then you can calculate the time that you need and they give you an example so if you want to use a 100 watt bulb uh, it will work for 5.8 hours with a 60 amp battery at uh, 12 volt it also gives you information on how to install it and it needs at least 15 centimeters around to cool down and have enough space to have an airflow with the included fan and also shows you the basic diagrams and what to do and what not to do. and now let's prepare it for a quick test so i'm going to untie the included cables and i'm going to show you a trick actually not a trick the cables here as you can see have already loops installed on both sides and they have this nice silicone cover to protect them from short circuits and you get this nice uh, alligator clips and you can pull this off from one side and with the included screws here you can actually uh, put this install it like this so you put this insulator over the 
plug and then this will be screwed there and then you can put this back so no need for soldering I think it's very smart so you can use the thick cables that are included with uh, this uh, I do not recommend using this one uh, you can you can use this only for very light loads as this should be limited to uh, just a few amps uh, it can melt down your socket in your car burn the fuses also the wires are very thin so this is more of an emergency or something like uh, no more than charging your laptop while you drive your car and that's all so don't use this for uh, high loads you need to use this type of cables or use some really good and thick wiring okay so I have installed the alligator clips and connected to the inverter and now we are going to do a quick test to see if this works and if it uh, produces the correct amount of voltage or outputs the correct voltage and I'm going to use a small lead acid battery and you are going to see some sparks there and this was uh, sadly turned on already so it should have been off before connecting it and I'm going to try to put those alligator clips stay better there all right and you power this on and it shows the green light and the voltage level this probably will blink on camera it's right now at 12.6 and it's fluctuating at 12.5.6 this is a very small battery for such a big inverter and I'm going to use this as a quick tester and let's see what we get here hopefully you are going to see the screen of uh, this contraption and yes we can see let's see the voltage here 223 volts all right but that's not very interesting let's see if this is truly a sine wave in a verter so I'm going to see this to oscilloscope mode now and I'm going to connect the wires here and there you go perfect sine wave as you can see and it's exactly as this was showing at 223 volts 0.4 and 49 Hertz and now I'm going to use this plug and I'm going to connect it to the inverter and now we have access to more plugs and I can install this back on and also I can tap into one of the outlets here and let's see if everything works up so if I turn this on this one works so you can see the sine wave here and this one also works so you can see the measured power here and that's not all I'm also going to put the second multimeter here as it's more visible there and I'm going to actually disconnect one of the alligator clips this is not a very good idea but I'm going to use this as an amp meter and it's not a good idea because the wires on this uh, multimeter uh, are uh, very thin so I'm going to have a huge voltage drop and now it's all hooked up together so if I power on the inverter I get the amp draw so this is at 0.7 amps right now and it has 12.4 volts and we get 222.8 volts here and here we can also measure the power draw and now I'm going to introduce another load so I'm going to connect this charger here this power supply actually not charger and this should spike up some current this is this has around 200 watts uh, maximum power and I'm powering up this battery charger and I'm going to use a larger LiPo as a load for this to draw up 
power and I'm going to connect it to the charger and now I'm running a very inefficient charge cycle here so I'm drawing power from this battery through the inverter making 220 volts then going back into another converter or power supply then going back to a charger and then going back to the battery so there are a lot of losses here but I'm kind of mitigating those because the battery even with the voltage drop and loss through all the wires it still shows here the voltage that the inverter receives and I still get the current so I can always calculate the rather exact amount of power that this, this inverter draws from the battery while here I'm measuring the direct output in watts of the inverter so even if I lose a lot on the conversion side at least I know how much I'm pulling out of the outlet and I know how much I'm putting in the inverter and now I'm just drawing out 1.3 watts of power and I'm putting in 1.1 amps at 12.2 volts and that's roughly just uh, 13 uh, watts of power but I'm using 30 watts of power to power on the inverter mostly as I'm not outputting a lot as this now in standby only draws 1.3 watts and now I'm going to start the charge so I'm going to select here a charge program this is a 5 amp LiPo so I can go to 5 amps easy on it and that's going to put some current draw and now I'm starting to charge power here should start to rise right away as the current here and I'm at 36, 42 watts, 47, 58 and it's now at 63 it's not a lot of power but as you can see here I'm using a lot of current because this is a 12 volt system so I'm drawing up 6.6 amps and the voltage drop at 11 point something let's call it 12 volt it's 12 volt at 6.6 amps so that's uh, roughly 78 79 uh, watts of power and i am outputting uh, 62 sometimes 65 up to 65 it varies a bit and what i wanted to show you here is that uh, right now with all these losses and all of the wiring and bad contacts here here and not imp a lot of improvisations this is by far not a perfect installment nor a hobby one this is absolute joke uh, with all of that uh, I do have an efficiency of actually 80% which is very good and this is advertised to have a 90% uh, efficiency and probably with a good battery good cables and higher load not this uh, 60 watts of power probably at over 100 watts of power you are going to get those 90 percent efficiency and this is a very good unit and there's another thing that i like not that the load is very small but there is absolutely no noise from this not from the fan and not from the electronics as I had some other inverters and they were very noisy when they are producing 220 volts and also look at this perfect sine wave here it's constant perfect sine wave so if you are looking for a cheap but very good quality inverter then I warmly recommend you getting this model and if you want higher power then you can go with the bigger brothers and also if you are going on a high power solar project uh, things like that or using a lot of batteries uh, you might get the 24 volt battery because going on uh, 24 voltage uh, instead of uh, 12 volts uh, it's a bit more efficient that it's on uh, 12 volt because on 12 volt everything is doubled up as current and you need very thick wires very short wires uh, it's kind of complicated the higher the voltage is uh, then the actual current going through the batteries with wires it's smaller so it needs 
uh, thinner wires to work efficient and that make the installment and all the wirings a bit more simple and cheap so be sure to follow my next uploads where I'm going to use this inverter a lot more and I'm going to power it from some lipos and the lipos should be charged solar also I have added a playlist somewhere here with uh, projects that are related with the solar batteries and inverter things you can check that out and I'm going to post new videos there and you can follow them up so until my next video see you and bye bye